Well, what's going on guys? Gavin Peacock here, Flip Society. I'm just out with the pooch right now on a little walk. I've completely lost him. I have no idea where the heck he went. But as you can see, it is basically fall. We're going, well, totally fall. We're going into December in a few days. So winter is upon us. I figured that's a good time to start thinking about travel, escaping the cold of Canada coming up. I made up the most brutal mount to get a good microphone into a GoPro to get audio from my phone on a gimbal right now. So you're seeing this nice and gimbal mounted, but GoPro is below. I want to talk fast in case I run into battery. Got stupid planes overhead anyway. So I'm gonna slam off 10, what I'm calling hints and tips for making your travel video and experiences better, uh, mainly using GoPro cameras and bigger cameras. They're all gonna apply. So we're gonna go into this really quick, starting with number one. I'm saying keep it natural and enjoy yourself. That's the idea of very natural occurring shots versus the forced setup shot. We don't wanna spend too much time or energy um, or ruining or missing opportunities on a vacation by trying to forcefully set up a shot. You just want to be smooth, go through everything as is, um, and just enjoy yourself. Don't don't let shooting the trip stress you out. Um, focus on having fun, and the good footage will follow. That being said, start shooting immediately. I always kind of cringe when I see just file number one, the first shot of a trip. Uh, usually, I start hammering shots off in the airport right away and then you're just going to start filling cards you always want a ton of footage to refer to uh, when you get back more footage is better you want to be able to you know get rid of all the clutter and use the best of the best of the best and if you've seen my how to edit like a video pro series um, you'll know what i'm talking about there's seven parts you should go watch them okay going into number two i'm calling it sun flights and seats before a trip i started visualizing the trip um, and starting from uh, even booking your your plane seats you want to think about or at least I'm weird and I think about if I'm taking off in the morning where is the sun going to be oftentimes some of the best shots you're ever going to get are off a plane window coming in or taking off from crazy areas of the world um, so I physically think about that taking off from Toronto or landing Porter I want to come in landing with the Toronto skyline on my proper side I know when the wind changes that screws you over so sometimes it's a total lottery but sun setting um, seat selection, I'm always going for a window seat, always trading with whoever I'm traveling with to get the good shots. Uh, I bring suction cup mounts, it's a little, you know, one or 2.1 in there. Suction cup mount your cameras to the windows so the vibrations of the plane go away for your time lapse. Um, sun, flight, seats. That all kind of ties into each other. Um, even when I go places, there's these Google apps you can get now that are sunrise and sunset detectors. So off in Jamaica, on one trip, you can go any, any time of the year to see exactly where the sun will be rising or setting and what time it is. If you're going on a crazy hike, that's a good way to time um, your hike arrival to get the ultimate shot when you get there. It's happened to me a bunch of times. I'm gonna be showing footage of everything as we go. That's number two. Okay, moving on to number three. Kara and I, during our Euro trip, PS, you need to definitely watch this Euro trip after I've been talking and using footage from it. Uh, came up with the abbreviation ABC, which stands for always be charging. So on your trips, you're bringing numerous spare batteries. I bring at least four if I can. Um, the GoPro power bank, I'm gonna show this bag later. Uh, bring your battery power banks and then car adapters and wall chargers. Any power charging source you can find, you're bringing because you always wanna be charging. When we were driving, we were charging. When we were hiking, I was charging my GoPros off the power bank in my backpack. Uh, no battery power, same as no SD card space no footage and then therefore you're not documenting the trip anymore so abc always be charging okay number four i wrote it down as number 3.5 is bring those anti-fog inserts for the gopro case i think you can get away with using toilet paper tissue paper if you had to but the anti-fog inserts the cheapest accessory you can buy has saved me in crazy situations jamaica one time was ruined when i did cliff jumping the transition from hot to cold condenses the inside of your um, camera case and you get the fog and that just ruins your shots. So you don't want that while you're doing an epic hike with a waterfall jump at the end or anything like so. So anti-fog inserts. Number four is that KISS principle, keeping it simple stupid. That's in terms of me packing. I try to, I packed a ton for my Euro trip with accessories just thinking what I might need. But if you're going on a hike, you wanna just minimize your stuff to maybe four or five accessories. 
um, even less if you have to. Don't get totally overwhelmed with equipment uh, most of the time. And in terms of organization, label your SD cards, know which one you're using each day. Um, I switched mine out a lot, thinking like I might run out of this one. I'll start with a fresh one, then you're going back, so you're dealing with different days around half ends of the card. Just keep a way of organizing your cards if you need to. And again, this all applies to a weekend, you know, just a little getaway or a full three week, four week, six week mega vacation trip around the world. So keep it simple. Moving on. Number five. Uh, thinking differently is the sense of how am I going to get a different shot than every other person is going to get. So easiest cues to start off, everyone holds a camera at chest height and they point and shoot straight off. No one's changing angle. So think about getting lower, getting higher, go to a different location. We have tons of examples like this. So we just traversed this mountain terrain to this wonderful view. Which you were just in. I was just in that. And what's terrifying is that it is full death. Don't go too close. Full death down there. And even in different conditions, do the thing that other people don't want to do. Um, we went up to a crazy hike on a really rainy, shitty day. Footage might not be the best, but we ended up being the only human beings up at a spot that's normally completely packed. So if you take it that way, um, take it that way, you're going to get shots that are unique to anyone else's. Um, yeah, number five, think differently when you're going for your shots. What is everyone else doing and how am I going to make that a little different? Okay, number six is the idea of, you know, later on post editing. Think of a funny theme or common transition you're going to be doing through the video. You can make anything up to be able to link back and be able to jump cut. Again, look at my editing series. You'll see all sorts of ideas on how to match action, match cuts, jump cuts. You'll see, uh, what do we got now? Uh, you and Olsen, the guy I follow, they do the 360 spin with the camera. Juji Mufu does the headbang to the lens and cut shot on action. I love to do my high five match on actions. Think of anything like that, just one simple thing. It could be anything that'll help you tie shots together um, for changing scenes. So it's nice to have a nice transition. Sometimes you can just do the cold cut and go from, you know, I'm in a park time on top of a mountain, but um, there's always easy ways. The fist bump was always made classic. Something like that just to keep it going. Um, quickly jumping back to five. I forgot to say, do the earlier. Again, you're going higher, going to sketchy places, just different places to get a different shot. Often people are lazy, they don't want to get a first thing. If you're the first one out there before anyone else, or be kind of risky and be the last one out there, um, you'll get the better shot that no one else is around for. Okay, number seven, uh, I had written down just as proper power supply. Uh, I bought, I think it was an actual GoPro power converter kit, because I knew the voltages and the plugs were all different over there. And the thought was I was gonna be powering a camera overnight out on balconies to get star lap shots. Um, and then I did some quick tests and whatever voltage was coming into the system was zapping the GoPro and putting surge lines down my frames. I don't know if I'll be able to find still shots to give you an example, but essentially ruined the effect of being able to do any night lapses on that trip. And I had to rely on one night of just doing uh, four batteries, which is annoying because you're timing an alarm to wake up to manually change the battery, which is no fun. So I'd say, seek out local power supply and local plug adapters. I don't know if any of you guys have run into that issue with the GoPro um, doing the same thing. So number eight I have as the gimbal. Gimbal always if you can. If you don't own a gimbal, watch my steady tricks video. I have 10 tips on there how to make perfectly steady footage without owning a gimbal. I'm on the Smooth 3 from Xeon right now gimbal. This thing is a beast, okay. Any camera you use from the crappiest camera to the top, top, top will look way more professional if you use a gimbal with it. So that's just simple advice. And if you want to see the power of a gimbal with a GoPro, you can watch my compilation of that. All my best of the best of the best shots with GoPro and gimbal. Again, it looks awesome. So gimbal, maybe future investment if you need it. Karma's, come, Karma's out for the GoPro now. And there's many other versions if you need to. And again, there's tips and tricks that I've given out that uh, creates smoothness without owning a gimbal if money and budget aren't an option. Okay, moving on. Do it. Yeah. Okay, number nine is simply, I'm calling it the ebb and flow. Ebb and flow on the way back. <laughs> and that's actually kind of similar to going places earlier, getting different angles where the uh, tourists aren't gonna be. Um, ebb and flow is the idea of the waves of actual human being pattern. Uh, if you think of the idea of like a tour bus arrives, 60 people get out, 60 people are gonna crowd to a location. 
chaos. chaos. I don't like it. I don't like it. So busy. They eventually teeter off. Usually, if you could watch patterns, we did this on the tourist bridge, um, the High Line 179, I think we're, it was called. Um, we simply just waited it out, watch, 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 and eventually, as crowded a day as it was, the whole bridge cleared out, and we had it to ourselves to get awesome shots. Um, and that became a funny theme the whole time through. Uh, we always just joked, let's wait for the ebb and flow, wait for the ebb and flow. So, um, if you're patient, wait it out. Human beings are always working a pattern. Tucker, Tucker. Tucker. And lastly guys, number 10, I'm just calling it the mastery of editing, being that storyteller. You could be gone and gather all the footage in the world, it still doesn't mean anything unless you put it into a meaningful timeline and create a masterpiece with it. Again, a lot of time spent, I you take you a while to get through, but it's worth it. My seven series videos of how to edit like a pro. Um, it's the whole idea of telling a story. You gotta put time into the edit. You can't just slap randomized footage on top of a track, music track, and think it's gonna work. Spend time matching your shots, matching to the beat of the song, finding clips that are gonna segue together, that look good together, that have a theme, you make the story. Um, decide how you're gonna tell the story, is it fully sequential? I think my Euro trip mainly was almost more or less sequential. Okay. Overdid it. Yeah, move. I'm puking Slavin. Puking Slavin. So I just wanted to keep that short and sweet. There it all is. As always, thank you for subscribing and liking and always feel free to comment below. I'm always checking and reading comments. I will answer any questions you have. Um, I just want to do one final push for all you guys to watch my Euro trip video edit. Everything I just mentioned is utilized in that video. Not because it's my own, but I'm just saying it's one of the best travel videos I've ever seen. So boom, boom, you should watch that video. I've also laid down in the past a uh, few uploads, all my gear laid out, talked about. I've given you steady tricks on how to keep your GoPro steady to get those professional shots. I've given you your top 10 GoPro mistakes and now you have your little travel tips. Also, you have the entire video editing series that I mentioned before. It's seven videos, they're pretty long, but you're gonna learn a crap load from it. So I would suggest sitting down and practicing with a video of your own as you go. And that's it for now. If you guys have any suggestions for further videos, I'll put those up. And as always, I will eventually be back into the action adventure and crazy stuff you used to see on my channel. So here we go. Winter's upon us in Ontario, Canada, Toronto. That's it for now, signing out. See you guys. Boop, beep. So beep, 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 boop, 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 boop. Uh, thinking differently. So I, I call it higher, lower, I don't know what I call it.